Hey guys, this is Dr. Ezra with Integrative Kidney Solutions and uh, I want to start by thanking you so much for your trust uh, for uh, the more than 300 uh, subscribers on our YouTube channel. Uh, I really appreciate it. And uh, I, I thought I'll come up to you from, uh, with a special video from Aman Jordan since I'm on a medical mission here. And uh, we'll follow up on Lara's video last week. She talked about sugar and the good sugar and the bad sugar. And I thought I'll talk to you about uh, protein and how it's related to um, kidney health. So let's do this. So uh, like we learned from Lara's video last week, there's good, good carbs and bad carbs. There's also good proteins and bad protein. There's even good fat and bad fat, but that's probably for another video. Um, and, and when we talk about protein, you can think about, uh, you know, even in the 1800s, a lot of uh, researchers talked about um, how animal protein intake or increasing intake of animal protein can uh, uh, increase this, the progression of kidney disease into failure. People at that time thought that uh, eating a lot of protein can increase the nitrogen waste product because, you know, protein can be metabolized into urea and nitrogen, and that burden on the kidneys can lead to faster progression of kidney disease. But unfortunately, in the 90s, there was a study called the MDRD study, uh, and it was published in our favorite New England Journal of Medicine, um, and um, it showed that there's no benefit from uh, you know, restricting protein intake in kidney patients. And the, the study was criticized because it was actually a very short study for, compared to the progression of kidney disease, which takes years, in, uh, if not decades, uh, by uh, a short, uh, you know, comparing the patient by a short study for three years only. And there was a lot, a lot of patients getting uh, keto acid supplements with, uh, that are tryptophan-based. Tryptophan so the study uh, it was criticized for this, but despite that, the KDGO guideline that came in 2012 um, actually came up and said that protein restrictions in kidney disease patients is um, actually controversial. There's always uh, a concern that protein restrictions can lead to malnutrition and, and muscle wasting in kidney patients. So um, really, uh, I credit the MDRD formula by delaying the progression of the dietary approach to kidney disease by more than 20 years. Uh, when, we, when we look at what we're learning about right now, we're learning uh, recently that there's a lot of benefit from a plant-based diet to slow down the progression of kidney disease. I'm gonna talk to you about why there's benefit from plant-based um, protein intake to slow down the progression of kidney disease. First, uh, there are studies that show that uh, higher intake of animal protein is associated with increased blood flow to the kidneys and increased pressure on the filtering unit of the kidneys and lead to a faster progression and faster uh, uh, loss of these filtering units. So um, more protein we eat, uh, more animal protein we eat, the more uh, loss of these units, the more faster progression of kidney disease. And restricting animal protein intake was found to improve uh, blood sugar control, blood pressure control, and cholesterol control in many kidney disease patients. Now, the second reason why we should uh, think about restricting animal protein intake is because of uh, blood acidity. So more recently, there is a tension on blood acidity, and when we talk about blood acidity, we talked, we're not talking about the stomach acidity. A lot of people get confused about that. When we eat food, there's the natural process of metabolizing food produce acid. Some food produce more acid and some food will produce less acid. So, um, you know, there's a lot of studies looked into that and it turned out that uh, having higher blood acidity is associated with faster progression of kidney disease. In fact, using alkali that reverse that acidity, uh, such as uh, sodium bicarb, uh, potassium bicarb, uh, or um, even baking soda, uh, was found to slow down the progression of kidney disease. But what are the natural alkali producers in a diet? Simply put, veggies and low sugar fruits. So 
actually, when uh, studies were looked into the, uh, the dietary intake, they found out that if you add five to six additional servings of veggies and low sugar fruits into uh, the standard American diet, which already have three um, servings of uh, veggies and fruits, they found that that reversed the uh, acidity uh, that's produced by metabolism in uh, the standard American diet. Now, when you think about animal uh, protein, animal protein produced the highest amount of acidity um, known in the diet. But the average American consumed twice the amount of protein in, uh, that is recommended uh, daily, and they also, actually, most of that is coming from animal uh, sources and low and potassium rich fruit and vegetables. Now, the third cause for restricting animal protein intake is our gut bacteria. So, uh, simply put, our gut has you know trillions of bacteria and and other um, pathogens and and good and bad. And we talked about this in a lot of videos in the past. Uh, but their con contents and, and balance is dependent on what we eat in the diet and the balance between carbs and protein. So if we eat a lot of uh, a diet that is high in um, fibers and, uh, and, and non-digestible fibers and uh, carbs um, compared to protein, then the uh, bacteria that grows in the, uh, in, uh, the gut is the bacteria that um, metabolize protein and ferment it. So uh, it's a healthy bacteria that uh, produce short uh, chain fatty acids that feed the uh, bacterial lining, the, the, the gut lining, and make it more uh, healthy. However, if we eat a lot of meat, and especially processed meat, uh, and we will feed the bad bacteria that will uh, cause inflammation, leaky gut, and uh, intestinal permeability, and end up causing seepage of endotoxins into the bloodstream, and uh, subsequently inflammation and progression of kidney uh, disease. Now, finally, the uh, intake of animal protein is associated with a uh, higher load of phosphorus. And phosphorus has been linked to faster progression of kidney disease and inflammation in the blood vessels. In fact, actually, calcium and phosphorus bind together and deposit in the uh, uh, kidneys, the blood vessels, the uh, heart valves. And the uh, higher intake of phosphorus uh, lead to the production of an inflammatory uh, hormone that lead to inflammation in the kidneys and the heart. Now, um, you see that there's a lot of evidence that uh, suggests that we should consider eating a plant-based protein, di uh, plant-based diet. Now, when we talked about when we talk about plant-based diet, we're not talking about vegan or vegetarian diets. We're mainly talking about having most of our protein coming from plant sources. Um, so what I tell my patients usually, you really want to think about your meat be the side dish and your main uh, dish should be coming from uh, veggies and low sugar uh, fruit. So really what we're talking about again is adding five to six additional servings of veggies and low sugar fruit into the standard American diet, which already has about three servings a day. So the total in a day you should be consuming is about, again, about eight to nine servings of fruit and veggies a day. Now when we talk about plant-based uh, protein sources, what are we talking about? We're talking about things like uh, beans, peas, lentil, uh, mushrooms, nuts, seaweed, now, a lot of people worry that uh, when you talk about these, you, they worry about phosphorus and taking high phosphorus content. But let me tell you, there's different type of phosphorus. So the phosphorus, not every phosphorus is created equal, like a good protein and bad protein. The phosphorus that come naturally in the food is less likely to be absorbed as to the phosphorus that is added in the processing of food. So if you eat naturally containing uh, food like uh, plant-based um, things that I mentioned, you're not likely going to absorb that phosphorus as compared to the processed food that we have in, on the shelves in, in every supermarket nowadays. 
Now I get asked often about what is the best animal protein to eat? What about chicken? What about fish? What about this? What about that? Now, uh, to, to be honest with you, the answer to that is very complex. And you want to think about your uh, choices, your lifestyle um, uh, and beliefs. And uh, some of the factors you want to think about is uh, biological va value of protein, think about sustainability, think about uh, contamination, think about uh, toxicity from pollution, think about sourcing, and uh, humane animal treatment. But no matter what you do, please stay away from processed meat. So processed meat is the ugly meat. So let's take an example, chicken. Chicken is, has one of the highest biological value protein uh, you know, ever. Um, you know, you, you think about egg whites, chicken, and fish ha have some of the highest um, biological value protein. But unfortunately, 90% of the chicken sold in the U.S. supermarket has been found to be contaminated with drug-resistant or, or antibiotic-resistant bacteria. So when you think about chicken, you want to think about getting organic, pasture-raised chicken, um, and you can also think about, and you, you want to buy it from the uh, natural food store because actually studies showed that uh, chicken that is uh, in natural food store are less likely to have uh, antibiotic resistant bacteria than the, than the one in the regular stores. But anyway, uh, you think about eggs also. Um, eggs is also one of the highest uh, biological value protein. And also um, you want to think about choosing uh, organic, cage-free, pasture-raised um, eggs. Now, what about fish? Fish, uh, think about uh, mercury contamination and plastic and farming. So you want to choose um, non-farmed fish or shellfish. What about meat? You want to think about sustainability. You want to think about um, making sure that the, the, the meat is the beef is, is grass-fed, uh, so grass-fed uh, beef is better than, pasture-raised beef and bison is better than, you know, not grass-fed, uh, non-organic beef. So I hope this is helpful to you. Um, if you have any questions, please put it in the comments below. Uh, if you like this video, press the like button. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And you can follow us also on www.inkidney.com. Also follow us on Instagram at Integrative Kidney. We're also on Facebook and Twitter.